The Chicago business scene is as diverse as the city itself, but we don't always hear from the entrepreneurs who keep the Chicago economy colorful. That's where I come in. I'm Mikai Brown, and this is the Minority Report. Jocelyn Adams is what you call a smart cookie. She's turned her baking blog, Grand Baby Cakes, into a full-blown business with advertising, brand partnerships, and a cookbook on the way. But the best part? She just quit her day job. We got together over old-fashioned southern tea cakes, Jocelyn did the baking, thank goodness, to talk about her grandmother, social media, and how we both want to be on TV. Did I mention the tea cakes? I'm really curious on how you were able to put your foot in the door and get Grand Baby Cakes in front of such a large audience. I think what really helped was that people started to gravitate towards Grand Baby Cakes because they were sort of starved, figuratively and literally starved for something that kind of spoke to their values and their family traditions. Your grandmother influenced you to cook. She gave you the passion behind this art. Absolutely. Who influenced you to say, hey, I want to step out and try to do this and make it a living? My Who is father. Interesting. Yes, my dad is an entrepreneur, so I think I kind of inherited that entrepreneurial spirit from him, you know, because he kind of just made his own rules and, and decided he wasn't going to be, you know, pigeonholed or I'm just going to work a job, I'm going to do what I want to do on my own terms. So knowing that I could take what I love, my passion, and actually influence people and then also, you know, make a living from it and, and you know, people want to pay for this, you right. know, what I can give, uh, it's, it's a dream come true. How do you make money? off of a page on the internet. So for me, it started just from, okay, I'm gonna share the recipes that I love and you know, just see if people gravitate towards that. From there, my followers started to grow, which helped me to get advertisements. You know, so advertising on your blog is huge. And then also brand relationships. So I have an incredible partnership with Pillsbury. I work as one of their featured bloggers and I do recipe development for them and serve as an ambassador for the brand. So that's also a huge way for bloggers to, you know, connect with brands that, you know, really fall in line with their morals and values. I don't believe in selling out. I won't work with a brand that I don't believe in or that actually doesn't mirror my values for the blog. So those are ways I think that you can definitely monetize your blog and actually make a living from it. Getting these huge sponsors and partnerships has your ethnicity ever come into effect of it being positive or negative with getting in those doors? Well, I think more than that, I think it's a numbers game with bloggers. There's thousands and thousands. And then also, you know, there's a very small window of, you know, minority um, bloggers who are, who are actually really at the height in the food blogging career. So it was difficult for me to actually find someone to emulate or, or to look up to in this field. I was like, oh, I guess I'm gonna have to look up to myself or I'm gonna have to actually be the one to break down those doors for others to come through. What would you say is one of the biggest mistakes that you've made and what have you learned from it? Oh gosh, where do I start? Um, actually, I think the biggest mistake I made in the beginning was not committing as much effort and time to the social media aspect. Nowadays, we're so engaged with social media. It's, it's become the way that you market your product or your service to people and that you connect with people. Brands love that, your followers love that. They chime in on my Facebook page all the time. I love to ask them questions, see what they think, see what they want me to make next. And they make it, you know, clear to you that A, they're supporting you, that they love you, that, you know, they want to be a part of the process and not just a bystander. Tell us what we have on the track. So these are tea cakes. You know, this is a, a southern delicacy, you know, something that's kind of been passed down, you know, from my family for years. And, and the funny thing is they're really simple to make. They don't have a lot of ingredients in them, but there's something that we kind of honor in our heritage as African Americans, you know, especially in the South. So um yeah, tea cake. Okay, dig in. Got any words over there? That speaks volumes, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>